for nearly three years, ACT UP New York has embarked on a campaign focusing on HIV AIDS prevention and has succeeded in making some impressive gains. ACT UP highlighted the failure of New York City's private and public hospitals to provide uh, effective post-HIV exposure treatments to those who are at risk for contracting HIV due to sexual exposure. The result of that campaign is that hospitals like Mount Sinai and public hospitals are more likely to give emergency 30-day courses of anti-HIV drugs called post-exposure prophylaxis, or PEP for short, in emergency rooms. ACT UP and groups such as the Treatment Action Campaign, or TAG for short, conducted a public awareness campaign to highlight the important role that anti-HIV drugs can play in radically reducing the risk of contracting HIV through sexual exposure if taken on a daily basis. This two-drug treatment, dubbed PrEP, or short for pre-exposure prophylaxis, is now being promoted in New York City's public STD clinics. ACT UP and TAG uh, pushed the Food and Drug Administration to approve a fourth generation HIV test for use in doctor's office. This rapid test is more sensitive and can detect infections sooner. The effort to get this approved was a success. ACT UP has pushed the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene to reopen Chelsea Clinic, which has been closed since March of this year for renovation. The clinic, which provided diagnosis and treatment to one-fourth of all New Yorkers using the shrinking public STD clinic system. Recently, ACT UP New York and others protested outside of the offices of the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene, um, and later that same day met with New York City Health Department Commissioner Dr. Mary Bassett on this issue. I'm joined by Jim Igo, a longtime HIV AIDS activist and longtime ACT UP member. Welcome to Progressive Community Media, Jim. Thank you, John. Well, first, uh, you know, the victories that I've just discussed are impressive, but recently ACT UP and TAG are meeting resistance from the health commissioner on the Chelsea STD clinic issue. Can you talk about the importance of the Chelsea STD clinic, how it figures into the planned end aids by 2020 that Mayor de Blasio and Dr. Bassett endorsed on World AIDS Day? Yes, I, and I should say that um, I sat on the uh, committee that wrote the blueprint for ending the epidemic, and I, in fact, wrote the first draft of the testing recommendations. And in the um, committee, we had looked toward the STD clinics of New York City as becoming models. We actually called them one-stop HIV hubs of care. Um, and we had the endorsement from the city on this. So among the things we wanted to accomplish at the clinics was we wanted the clinics to start giving antiretroviral therapy right at the clinic to people who tested HIV positive. Of course, if you did that, you would have to link someone to long-term care as well. We wanted to give full 30 days worth of PEP. You've mentioned PEP, and right now at an STD clinic, you would get a starter pack. So there would be no disruption of taking the medicine. We wanted to actually give a full 30 days. And you also mentioned PrEP. We wanted to equip the clinics to give starter packs of PrEP to people who were good candidates, plus linkage to care. And because of we now have in this state the Affordable Care Act and expanded Medicaid, we wanted to actually situate navigators within the STD clinics that would link people to long-term care. I mention all that because you can imagine those of us who frame the blueprint when we wanted the STD clinics of New York to become these models that we thought we could then spread across the state and to other sites of care, you could imagine how dismayed we were when we found out that the city shuttered the Chelsea Clinic, which, as you said, um, 
saw fully a quarter of the people in New York City who went to an STD clinic. That's to put that in perspective, that's about 20,000 sexual health visits a year. And as we know, Chelsea neighborhood itself is the epicenter for both the HIV epidemics and the STD epidemics. So we f were dismayed that just as we were making STD clinics the hubs of care, the hub of care at the center of the epidemic was blown out of the water. Can you talk about how the city's dealt with the uh, city STD clinic uh, closure situation over the last five to 10 years? Sure. A number of clinics all over the city have been closed and reopened some for remodeling, some for yeah, other reasons. I, I should say that while working on the Chelsea Clinic and trying to come up with ways to bring the services to the community even as the clinic shuttered for renovations, and I should mention it's slated to come back online in September of 2017. Um, even as we started working on that, we saw that the Chelsea Clinic was not an isolated incident, that in the last eight years or so, the city has four renovations, shuttered clinic after clinic in neighborhood after neighborhood across the boroughs of New York. Only once did they replace the services by having a replacement clinic. And we've found out and this is actually research that you started, John, and that a bunch of us have run with, we found out that at the same time that the clinics were being um, taken off, that there was a great um, loss of services at a STD clinics because of budget cuts under the Bloomberg administration. Services were greatly cut. HIV testing and other ST and testing for STD were greatly cut at the STD clinics so that we found a loss of 40,000 sexual health visits in just a few years starting with 2010, a loss of some seven, more than 70,000 HIV tests that were done there. Um, in the 2010, was the year that the state passed a routine HIV testing law. In that very same year that the state was saying we have to routinely test everyone, the city was curtailing its HIV tests so that if someone said, oh, I was tested a few months ago, they wouldn't test you again. If someone did not test symptomatic for a sexually transmitted infection, they wouldn't test you for HIV, and we feel that that's antithetical to the um, state law, but not only that, that in that time, the HIV epidemic has changed. And we, as we, we are still looking for people who test HIV positive, but we want to find them at the earliest point in infection, because more and more the data show the earliest treatment can prevent the most complications with HIV. So it's really important that we get people in acute infection. But not only that, as we've been talking about, in an age of post-exposure prophylaxis and pre-exposure prophylaxis, and in an age of affordable care, it becomes more and more important that we even test people who are HIV negative but might be at risk for uh, routine exposure so we can get them the services. So at the same time that we're trying to get more and more people tested, we find that there's been less and less testing done at the STD clinics. The city, when we bring that to them, say, well, of course, we think that being the city thinks that testing is being done more and more at private venues as more and more people get um, put onto long-term affordable care through either the Affordable Care Act or expanded Medicaid. But we, t we have told them, 
overwhelmingly the number of tests that were eliminated occurred from 2010 to 2012, and that's before the Affordable Care Act and expanded Medicaid kicked in in 2014. Furthermore, we point out that in the year, um, in the last year, routinely when you look at the graphs, there are 18,000 fewer sexual health visits across the city, and that tracks an awful lot with the elimination of 20,000 sexual health visits with the closing of the Chelsea STD clinic. We are not saying all of that loss is due to the Chelsea clinic closing. I would be surprised if it were because we are seeing changes in how people are getting their uh, sexual health care and other health care. But when we go to our friends in public health, they say it is just unreasonable to think that fully all that 18,000 has been taken up by um, private practitioners or private um, health care clinics or th things like that. One of the things that I noticed when you were talking was uh, you were talking about the importance of getting people on treatment early in the infection. Um, and that's, that's really because that overwhelmingly people are much more infectious in the first few weeks after infection. Yes. So if you catch the infection early, you really eliminate um, a potential highly infectious person from transmitting the disease. Or later in the disease, the body's own immune system, even if left untreated, is less infectious. It's still, still people can transmit, but you really lower the risk a lot to a lot of people. Just go back a little bit, because I think that whole question of people not getting visits, th th there was um, some data that I heard where like hundreds of thousands of tests were actually cut from the city health system as a whole. Is that right? Can you give us some more details about that? Yes, the, we have to realize um, we are not blaming DOHMH for all of this. In fact, we sympathize greatly with them. And there is certainly an activist wing within DOHMH. And some of them actually sat on the, blue pr uh, on the committee for drawing up the blueprint, who actually believe in the idea there should be an activist public health system. Um, but there is also, when DOHMH faced these huge cuts in the last two terms of the Bloomberg administration, unfortunately, they cut an awful lot of things that we now need if we want to end the epidemic. So we're going to have to go back and uh, get new funding if we want to end the epidemic, if we want our STD clinics to become hubs of care. Uh, you mentioned that on the very same day, September 23rd, that ACT UP demonstrated outside the headquarters of DOHMH, several of us met with Health Commissioner Bassett and a lot of the appropriate officials within DOHMH. And I have to say one of the interesting things is there really are two visions of what public health can be that different personnel at DOHMH articulated at the same meeting. Some people see public health as almost being a last ditch safety net for the indigent. And other people see it as much more activist and actually we can come get to a day where our STD clinics won't only be hubs of care, they might actually be centers of sexual health and wellness. And so of course that very much is in keeping with what an activist group like ACT UP believes. I will say for me, the best thing that happened at that meeting is that Dr. Bassett pledged DOHMH to becoming an activist department. 
that with respect to HIV and with respect to STDs, it would support ambitious programming. And not only that, she agreed with us that the DOH MH has to actually go to the city and ask for the money it needs. Now, nobody is saying to Dr. Bassett or anyone at DOHMH, we want you to refund the same things that were refunded in 2010. We talked a lot of the ways here this evening already about how the epidemic has changed and how we are now looking a lot more for people who are HIV negative and at risk or may have had a recent exposure that we can that we can prevent from becoming an infection. So a lot of things have changed. Also, we realize more and more there are populations, young men of color who have sex with men, transgender women, where the incidence rate is much, much higher. So naturally, we are going to want to target all of our resources to those places where um, HIV incidence is highest. But I am really happy that Dr. Bassett has pledged to asking for money, particularly for this one reason. And I've gone to, <laughs> I'm afraid maybe some people in ACT UP are tired of hearing me say it. But in 2016, DOHMH will be rebidding all of the contracts that it has with its community partners for giving HIV tests. I think this gives us an incredible opportunity. If we can rewrite those criteria so that it actually reflects the epidemic right now, so that we actually target it to test people in high prevalence groups, high incidence groups, or those groups that have high risk profile, a, um, gay youth, where the incidence or prevalence might not be high right now, but we have a damn good reason for believing it's going to be high in the future. If we can target it so that it really tests those populations, and that it goes across all the geographic areas of New York. In other words, so we hit the whole geographic and all the demographics so that we get the whole city and all the populations that are at risk within it. We really have the opportunity to remake HIV testing in the city. So I'm very excited that Dr. Bassett has committed to asking for money because those of us in the Ending the Epidemic Coalition who have been writing up budget asks both for amendments to this fiscal year and especially for the asks for next fiscal year will very much be targeting HIV testing. We want there to be a really robust HIV testing supported by the city, the city supporting those community groups that can best reach the HIV communities across the city. So I think we, we really have an opportunity. Um, we may later get into some of the shorter term things where I think the meeting with Dr. Bassett was disappointing in some ways. So I don't want to paint it across the board as being fully successful. But in the wider areas and in the longer term ones, I, I think we can really remake HIV testing in this city, both within the STD clinics and outside the city facilities. Talking about basically getting AIDS service organizations um, like maybe Harlem United, like um, others that might be located in um, high prevalence areas like Bushwick or yes. something like that to give them money so that they can actually do the testing themselves? Yes, but I'm also saying that if we can get the funding for it, DOHMH is going to have to be proactive 
rather than just reactive. It will not be enough to publish an RFP, which is a request for a proposal, that we want an organization which deals with transgender women of color. It will have to be proactive in going out there and recruiting those organizations that can actually deliver, and maybe even giving aid to those organizations so they can actually do the work that's needed. Because it will not be enough just to, you know, passively publish it on the website that, hey, we want you. We have to realize the last eight years of the Bloomberg administration, public health in New York City was on a starvation diet. And I'm really happy the de Blasio administration is a progressive administration. We haven't seen it that much in public health. I don't think it's so much maybe the fault of the de Blasio administration. They had ideas about what they wanted to hit coming in, things like education and housing. And you know, they've got my heart with that. I very much support that too. But we have to realize that we have so many stars aligned right now. We have a democratic city council that's progressive. We have a progressive administration. We have a progressive administration in Albany. And we have a plan for ending the epidemic that looks toward the city, which has 80% of the epidemic as the place that really the work has to get done. So if we can, you know, if we can align all that stuff, I really think we can do great work in ending the epidemic. But not only that, that work will improve public health. That work will link people who are not now linked to long-term health care to the health care that will improve their outcomes across their lives, not just with respect to HIV. So I really think ending the epidemic can do such good work in this city. And I hope that ending the epidemic, but even failures like the closing of the Chelsea Clinic and all of the irregularities about our STD clinics and the testing that got done, all of that that it revealed, I'm hoping rather than just our getting out in the street and yelling about it, we can actually use it as a lesson that teaches, shows us, all right, these are where our defects are, Let's then get together. We've got the funding. We have a plan. Let's actually improve public health to a degree that we can actually, as I say, end the epidemic and change public health in New York State. Well, one of the questions that I have has to do with um, where does the city council really stand on this? It, it seemed like that there were mixed signals. There were people like uh, Corey Johnson who seemed to advocate a proposal that ACT UP had put forward that would cause for, call for an immediate uh, creation of a mobile stationary STD clinic made out of a mobile trailer, for example, that would be housed somewhere very close to where the Chelsea Clinic um, was previously housed. And my understanding is that Dr. Bassett, for example, did not like this proposal. And, uh, but then on the other hand, it seemed like um, that there were other proposals that came before uh, the city council that were not funded. Uh, can you talk about that? Yeah, let me say, Corey Johnson has been a great friend of the ending the epidemic movement. Um, one of the things we were most disappointed with in June I've mentioned how in 2016, the city will put forth requests for proposals for testing. Well, in 2015, it wanted to fund requests for proposals for PrEP, pre-exposure prophylaxis. So in a similar way, it wanted to go across the city and across all of our populations 
and fund all of those local clinics or local organizations that work with populations at risk so that they could deliver the drug prep, but also all the services and other testing that you need in order for people to successfully take prep. And at the last m moment in June, the city council did not fund that. We were very disappointed. We heartily blame um, council member Johnson for this. He did his best. And in the November amendments, we have reason to believe that all or almost all of that prep request for proposals will be funded. And an awful lot of other uh, funding that the uh, ending the epidemic uh, movement relies on will be funded. However, you mentioned specifically the Chelsea Clinic. There had been put forth uh, the idea of a permanent uh, clinic, small clinic on the site, a prefabricated prefabricated clinic, something like the prefabricated clinic they came up for the Ebola virus la about this time last year. And a all of the local politicians were on board with it. And as you say, the DOHMH did not feel it was appropriate or would be needed. Um, I don't see the funding com coming through for that. That was never officially in any budget proposal that went through. And after DOHMH kind of pulled the plug on uh, wanting it, I think that lost a lot of the political momentum. I will say also, we have found out since then that the site for the Chelsea STD clinic several years ago received funding, federal funding, uh, and so it's considered a federal parkland right now. And getting a, f a prefabricated clinic there would require a waiver federally because you're not allowed to do anything but park stuff with it and it would require um, licensure from the state and the city, DOHMH, to get on board. And it's less than two years before the clinic itself is supposed to be back online. So I have to say, just as a practical matter, I do not see those three huge bureaucracies plus local advisory boards, et cetera, et cetera, getting together on a plan that would require an awful lot of people and bureaucracies coming together. I don't think that should shut us up. I think we should continue to say that the services that have rep been replaced in Chelsea have not been enough.